Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at how to create an underwater scene inside Blender. This is uh, what we're going to be doing and uh, the project files are going to be available on Gumroad, Patreon and my YouTube membership page. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to add Chaos 6. These are light streaks of God rays, bubbles and uh, just setting up everything and putting it together to make it look like we are under water. So, so the first thing we're going to look at is how to make the core sticks and uh, that's very easy. Let me just borrow this ground here, uh, this plane here, which is just a displaced plane with a lot of subdivisions and uh, I'm using uh, this texture here, sand texture uh, to displace the ground using geometry nodes by just offsetting the position of, of each vertex using a set position. Now let's talk about the core sticks. So for the caustics, you need a spotlight like this. This technique, I got it from watching a tutorial by Polyford. He has a really good tutorial on making a caustics. I'm just going to do a quick overview of uh, the tutorial. I will be leaving a link in the description uh, so that you can go check out the video if you want a detailed version. The way he's doing it is basically creating a light gobble for this spotlight and uh, light gobbles only work on spotlights so make sure that your light is a spotlight and uh, then go to your uh, shader editor and turn on use nodes and uh, if i look at this give it a strength of let's say uh, so the idea is to use a voronoi texture because voronoi textures look similar to caustics and uh, the way to make them work with the light you need to change the texture coordinates to use the normal direction of your light just get a geometry input that will give you access to the normal vector of your light then you start to see something in here so let's play with the values here and uh, what he used he used a smooth f1 a smooth f1 to get a more detailed caustics in his version if you mix these two together and use the difference operation or blending mode you can see more detail and uh, i think we can smoothen this a bit and you can start to see the caustics a little bit better so if i amplify this uh, let's say 10 you get something like that if you play back nothing happens so you want to change these from 3d to 4d so that we can animate this y value but we need to make sure that the only setting that is different between these two nodes is uh, the smooth value so to do that just use a value input that is shared between the two nodes like this uh, so that I can, if you want to animate this you can just do that so i can even just use uh, our driver which is frame divided by s to 500 yeah we want some movement like that we don't want too much uh, another thing i did for my version this i don't think he does this in his version uh, what i did is also added a math node here a uh, vector math and uh, you can move this on the x-axis like that but uh, if you want you can also use another uh, value uh, say frame uh, divide, divide by 200 and if you plug this into a combined xy on the x here you can move this constantly like that but uh, if you want it to feel like a wave you can use a math node with the sign operation uh, that way this can go and then at some point you should turn back i think i need to speed this up by multiplying uh, this here i can see you can easily create uh, i think i need to multiply it here and uh, here to make it run faster so you see it goes and then reverses back so that's that's a nice way to add to add more detail and the great thing about this is that uh, if i add another object say let me just borrow this chair because this is a light these textures will be projected onto other objects so with that the next thing was to, to make this look deeper you can increase the blending so that we don't have a harsh line like this so if i bring this up just like that and make this spread out quite a lot just like that i see we're starting to add layers of detail to this uh, which is nice i just like that and uh, the other thing you could do is add some depth to this and uh, you can use a a volume cube so if i add a cube here uh, this is going to be using the absorption and connect this make the water look murky so let me just and more deep and deeper 
and uh, let me first just change this to wireframe if you remove the environment lighting and uh, yeah you can see now it looks a bit darker and uh, you can make this even more yeah so this will affect the color of the overall scene and, and you can see in my original version i have this volume info and if i change the color uh, basically the water becomes uh, the color of this volume shader the other thing is to work on these gold rays because they think they are really important in selling the effect you can do this using volumetrics and uh, if i turn that on so if i just use a principal volume and just bring this bring this down the render looks even better but again the issue is that it becomes quite quite slow but if you want that that is also something you could do you can even mix you can even blend these two shaders also so that you get the two effects layered on top of each other you will get better results but again it's going to be very very heavy and let me bring back my good rays you can see the difference is there but it's not too I guess it's, it depends on the kind of look you're going for. For me, I think I, I like this better. It's, it's render, it renders faster, but uh, you can always mix it with the principal shader to get even better quality. So the bubbles here, I just have this emitter object. Yeah, it's just a plane uh, with a particle system, and uh, I change the render to render to render object, and uh, I have this simple mesh uh, that I'm instancing simple mesh which is basically a cube with a subdivision and then pushed in like this to look like a bubble that i'm instancing as a bubble on this i have for this particle system all i did is remove uh, the gravity i set the gravity to negative 0.2 so that the bubbles are pushed up going up like that and i also set this chest to be a collider object and uh, the rest is just instancing some random rocks some random grass yeah the grass is animated yeah the way i animated the grass is i'm just using a geometry nodes uh, for that uh, it's a very subtle animation i know it's texture that is plugged into the set position to give us that subtle animation then i created an instancer to instance the grass and uh, the the different rocks i have it's very very simple to use you can increase the density you can change the seed change the scattering the object size and uh, basically select the collection you you want so uh when i create this sort of setup i just save them into my own collection so for for example uh, since i like this instancer i can just use my asset library to render a quick preview of this and just save it into my library so that if i want to use it i can just go into any project i want so for example here and search for instancer and now i can just reuse it just like that and have access to it yeah that's the beauty of the asset library links are in the description if you want to check it out yeah so yeah the uh, the other thing i wanted to show you is how to add these fake gold rays so those are simple all you need is a plane just scale it and uh, you can even rotate it but uh, make sure the pivot point is at the end origin to 3d cursor like that and you can rotate this if you want just uh, like that and uh, if you go to the shader you can set up a new shader that uses an emission and transparency blended together and uh, you can use a noise texture as the factor uh, you can see how that looks you can even look at this in ev here and uh, if i side the volume and it can add a ramp to control uh, the contrast like that but uh, you want this to be elongated to make this look like gold rays so you can use control tab you can use object coordinates and uh, scale this on the let's say on the it could be on the y axis so that they are really long like that 
I think we need to switch these transparency, these shaders. And if you're using EV, you would have to change blending mode and switch it to alpha blend, see the results more clearly. So you can see what we have. But the issue with this technique is that the shader tends to cut off things at the end here. They end abruptly. So what we can do is use, again, coordinate mapping and texture coordinates and separate the XY coordinates and so that we get a gradient that runs from the Z from up here down to down here. And I think I need to add a math node to push to push this gradient. Is it on the Y? Yeah. Yeah, so we want a gradient. Yeah, that's, that fades like that. And uh, we can subtract using math node or we can multiply so that these god rays fade and never abruptly end. And I think I need to scale them up a bit just like that so that they are larger and you can see that. Now we have another issue where these god rays are getting cut off at the edge here. That is also something we can solve with uh, another gradient. So if we look at the y gradient, the x gradient, we can use a ramp. that that terminates at both sides and uh, I need to readjust it and center it by adding a math node uh, so that we can reposition it in the center. I think it should be 0.5. And uh, if you want to scale it, you just have to add a multiply. A multiply, uh, let me do 0.5 and just offset it again so that it's in the center. You can again multiply these results with this. So multiply this. And you can see now the edges are softer and faded. So that means we have that. Now, if you want to animate this, what you can do is uh, we, we just need to look at our coordinates. So this here, I think we can animate the Z coordinates and you can see now you get more of what we want. So I'll just use hash frame divide by 300 so that this looks softer like that. And basically that's the technique I used and it saved me a lot of render time. So you see, you get basically the same effect uh, that you would if you used uh, God rays and uh, what I did is created a few of these uh, spread them out to have a little bit of depth uh, let me first remove some of these so that is faster uh, the rest was just compositing so if you go to the compositor you can see I just add do some color correction or color balance whatever you want to call it add some glare it's like adding bloom. Yeah, something like that would be great. And uh, added some, some more, and then added some lens distortion or chromatic aberration. That was it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, make sure to leave a like, subscribe. I also have another tutorial coming. Uh, this where we do something like this, so you can turn on notification and uh, you'll be notified when this comes out and a lot of other stuff. You can see we do a lot of experimental stuff at the channel. So if you are a fan of things like that, just make sure to subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.